In this video, we'll explain how to fit the SomnoGuard SPX oral appliance. You'll need to gather some instruments before you start. Disposable gloves, nitrile ones are particularly suitable for the fitting, two small bowls with a minimum base diameter of 10 centimeters, a kettle or saucepan, pointed tweezers, and a side cutter. Before fitting the appliance, check the patient's dental status and condition. You must also determine the mandibular advancement by letting the patient repeatedly move their lower jaw forward as far as possible. Also, check whether the oral trays in their original form match the patient's dental arches. If not, the width of the trays can be altered after heating them in hot water. Have the two small bowls ready. Fill one with very cold water. In addition, boil some water in the kettle or saucepan and pour it into the second bowl. With the hard outer tray facing downwards, put one of the trays in the hot water bowl for about 60 seconds. Using the tweezers to grab one of the fixation knobs, take the tray out of the water. Allow it to cool down in the air for about 60 seconds while carefully shaking off excess water. Moisten your gloves with water to prevent them from sticking to the appliance. Make sure that the material doesn't cause burns when inserted into the mouth. Holding the fixation knobs, place the tray centrally under the upper teeth with the line mark on the front edge between the front teeth. If the tray doesn't match the dental arch, the width can be altered by gently pulling the fixation knobs apart or pressing them together. Press the bottom of the tray from the front to the rear against the upper teeth using your thumbs and forefingers. Keep the tray in place and gently press the thermoplastic material with your fingers at the outer and inner wall of the tray against the teeth. With a slightly forward lower jaw, keep the mouth closed for about one and a half minutes. The patient should swallow and gently press the thermoplastic material with their tongue against the inner wall. Meanwhile, let the patient open their mouth and check whether the outer and inner walls of the tray are close to the teeth. Correct if necessary. Grab the fixation knobs to vertically and carefully remove the tray from the mouth. Let the tray cool down in the bowl filled with cold water for about 20 seconds to harden the material. Place the tray on the teeth and check its fit. If it doesn't fit perfectly, the process can be repeated. Leave the upper tray on the teeth while fitting the lower tray. Replace the water in the hot water bowl with freshly boiled water. Reuse the water in the cold water bath. Put the second tray in the hot water bath for about 60 seconds and once removed, allow it to cool down for about 60 seconds. Ask the patient to move their lower jaw slightly forward. Place the heated lower tray on the lower teeth. Make sure that the line marks on the upper and lower trays form a vertical line. If necessary, the width of the tray can be altered by gently pulling the fixation knobs apart or pressing them together. Keep the tray in place and gently press the thermoplastic material at the outer and inner wall of the tray against the teeth using your fingers. With a forward lower jaw, let the patient firmly clench their teeth and keep them closed for about one and a half minutes. Meanwhile, let the patient open their mouth and check whether the outer and inner walls of the tray are close to the teeth. Correct if necessary. Ask the patient to make sure that the tongue doesn't move the inner wall of the tray upwards. Grab the fixation knobs to vertically and carefully remove the tray from the mouth. Let the tray cool down in a bowl filled with cold water for about 20 seconds to harden the material. Place the lower tray on the teeth and check its fit. If it's not perfect, the fitting process can be repeated. After reheating, the thermoplastic material reverts almost to its original form. There should be no thermoplastic material on the hard outer tray shell and around the fixation knobs. If necessary, carefully remove it by heating the spots locally in a hot water bath. The package includes two connectors. 
One end of each connector is bent. The other end is straight. Attach the bent end with the narrow opening to the front fixation knobs of the upper tray. Repeat the process on the other side. Then attach the straight end with the narrow opening to the rear fixation knobs of the lower tray. And again repeat the process on the other side. The four unused fixation knobs can be removed with a side cutter. The extent of the lower jaw advancement depends upon the length of the connectors. The shorter the connectors, the larger the lower jaw advancement. Each connector has a spindle screw in the center. The length of the connectors can be altered by turning the spindle screws with the spanner. The lower jaw advancement is the largest when the screws are screwed in completely. It's important to always turn the two screws evenly and symmetrically to ensure the connectors are of equal length. Mandibular joint disorders might occur with an asymmetric adjustment. The patient can now insert the SomnoGuard SPX mandibular advancement device in the mouth and check its fit.